Hi everyone, it's Rachel, founder of Artsy. Thank you so much for joining us today. I am so excited to be able to introduce to you our featured guest for today, Gaia. Yes. And she uh, has headed the Vegas Creative Network here in town and uh, so excited about it and really just want to learn more about it. Yes. So welcome, welcome. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. Just like I do my thing, I love seeing other people do their thing in Vegas. So thank you. I feel like it's going to be a really cool conversation. Oh, yeah. 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 So the funny thing is you have your own podcast as well. So you're used to interviewing people. Yes. And now we're flipping. And so I get to interview you. you no, know, I'm like, I love it. <laughs> yes. I get to lay back and just chill. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love it. Well, I'm so excited. I love that you've created something here in Vegas to really highlight and promote our own homegrown talent here. Yes. We always talk about having a platform, being able to have the broader reach. But if we don't have community, right, if we're not supporting our own community, then what are we really about? Yes. So I love that that's really the main focus of what you do. So can you share with us and tell us a little bit more about Creative Network? Yeah, yeah so one thing I'll say, too, I feel like when it comes to advancing in life in general, mm -hmm. you'll find that just you by yourself, you just will go only so far. But when you have a community, that is really where the strength comes in. And the community part kind of fell into my lap. It was like I, I had told you earlier, I'm a video editor, videographer, and I was freelancing when I stumbled upon an owner of a restaurant and he's like, we should collab together. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, yeah, of course I'll do a video. But he was like, no, like do events. And I was like, events? Yeah. I was like, what? It didn't excite me at the time because right. I never had done them and it just felt like a lot of work that I wasn't used to. And so I was like, and do what? Like, you right, know? Yeah. And he's just like, just bring your creative friends and have a good time. And I'm like, creative friends, would anyone even come? So it was a brunch and it just turned out so successful where a lot of people were hearing about it and my name was starting to like revolve in the community. And I was like, this is so weird. Like I was not expecting that at all. Oh my God. You know, I always thought that people would know me just for being me, but as soon as I did events, mm -hmm. that's really where everything came in and all the opportunities came in for me was when I could help other people Absolutely. and networking. I did a brunch and then I did a, an award ceremony, all white party. I did a short film Love for it. it. And I'm just saying I wasn't planning any of that. Sure. The biggest creative network is not even a year old. Wow, congratulations yes. to you, you then. So much. You're doing some exciting stuff. Yes, yeah. it's a year in April 14th. Wow, yay. <laughs> you have to have a party. <laughs> yes, so we're going we're gonna to pull up the brunches again. Yeah, I love it. But yeah, with that said, it's just, it's garnered so many, so much attention sure. that I could never have expected. This year, I think last year I had four or five events. This year I'm trying to have 20 to 30. Good. I want to collaborate, like I'm so big on that. I've already done two events. I have another one coming up next Sunday. Tell us about that. Yes. I'll tell you Hopefully about my... we'll get this up fast enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I have an event. It's going to be called Real Talk because we're so used to having so many like lit mm -hmm. events. This happened last year where I felt like a lot of my events were kind of centered around drinking and which isn't bad. Sure. You know, it's summer. Sure. But I think it's important to have a balance and having something more more chill and more intimate. Mm -hmm. So real talk is that. So we're going to have a topic and the topic, the next topic is what does it mean to be real? So oh, I love that. whatever that means to you, you know, sure. does it mean being honest? Does it mean whatever it means? And I just want to have a space where I can actually talk to people instead of like dancing and, mm -hmm. you know, I could be so hype and stuff. Those events, 50 people come, right? So it's hard for me to connect with everybody. Sure. And just for example, one of my events, I met, I have to shout out Elquan. Yeah. I love Elquan, but he went to my brunch and we ended up making an event called Create and Relate. And it's a show. So we have a show with like R&B and rappers, artists. That just came off of like him wanting to take the time to like network with me one-on-one. -on -one. So I just think that is important. Mm -hmm. So Real Talk is coming um, on Sunday, March 17th, 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. At the Black Hair Shop, shout Ooh. out to Angelina. I'm gonna have it for six months going to be a six month run wow. uh, once a month. Well, congratulations. Yeah. That's really exciting. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. I'm going to have like several events in a month. I want to be, 
I want the Vegas Creative Network for anyone to be like, where, what is like a really solid place where I know when I go, it's gonna be fun. Sure. It's gonna be productive. You know, I'm gonna find people that I align with. Like, mm-hmm. I want that. Yeah. So, well, I yeah. love it. <laughs> I, you, when we were talking earlier, you mentioned something about one of the things that, that's a challenge for us here in Las Vegas, yes. and it's going to be more of a challenge as we continue to grow, and that's organization. Yes, the organization 100%. side of our arts and entertainment community, right? We're growing so fast. We have people coming in. We have people working. We have little niche groups. Yep. And so how do we really kind of expand that circle And so a lot of what you're doing is presenting organization into our community. And so I love that. So, so, so important. But the other thing that I love about you, just in talking to you, is (laughs) you're a multi-creative. Yes. Right? So you're not only organize, you not only organize this networking group to bring the community together and to feature them and to highlight them and to give them an opportunity to actually connect in person. I love that. But you're a videographer, you're a video editor, you're also a designer, artist, yeah, a painter, uh, a painter, filmmaker. Look, tell us about that. Yes. I just feel like, again, as the founder of the Vegas Creative Network, I have to tap into all of the creative parts of myself yeah. that make me excited. I've been painting for a while, but... Well, yeah, well we're stand up, it. stand up, show us. Up? <laughs> yeah, can you see it if I stand up? Yes. How cool is that? Maybe she'll design a little something for Artsy. Hey, if y'all want. <laughs> We'd love it. it. I love course, that. Of course, of course. I have to tell them, I'm trying to be known as a painter as I move forward. So, like, I'm trying to, everything I wear, like, something has to be painted on me. So, I so everywhere I go, I was going to wear, like, painted jeans. So I'm like, let me, let me chill out a little bit. Well, next time. <laughs> yeah, next time. <laughs> um... But yeah, like I, I really feel like as soon as I gave to the community, for example, the short film, I could use other people's talents in a way that like we all are doing our passion and we make something beautiful from it. Sure. And I just feel like I have the opportunity now. I know so many people for the short film. I remember I just made the script and I just called anyone who was down. Sure. I you love know? it. So I, I, love I worked it. with like five different videographers, dancers, actors like whoever wanted to be in the film Mm -hmm. and we just made it work and i edited the whole thing to make it more of like a cohesive thing so yeah i just feel like there's no limits right now you know so like why if i like it i'm gonna do it video editing is like my bread and butter i think that will always be there i even host i love hosting you An MC. Do, yeah, well, tell us. I want to learn more about, you have your own YouTube channel. Oh, yes, yes, yeah, yes. So please tell us about that. I have so many questions for you. No, so. like, please <laughs> ask. We could be here for an hour, like, yeah. I don't mind. Yes, my interviews. I know people see it right now as a podcast, but it's a show. And I'm working on it being a docu-series because, like I had I said, organization mm-hmm. and media are the two biggest things that we need in Vegas. Yeah. So I want somewhere, something like MTV where it's like they have the interviews and it's documented and it's there. And I just want to show the complete story Mm -hmm. of an artist. I don't think a lot of artists get that chance. A lot of people that I interviewed never have been interviewed before. Sure. And we do like a 45 minute interview and we talk about everything. Like how did you start and all these things. Cause I want to know everything. I don't care about the the achievements all the time. Like those are great, but like, who are you? You know, like, why is that important? Who are you from? And you just start, you know, learning things where you're like, whoa, yeah. like, that's crazy. I didn't know that. Like we had mentioned, I have to mention Coco. Yeah. <laughs> because, Coco. yes, Coco. We love Coco. Love Coco. And for example, with Coco, when I did her interview, I just felt like she needed that do justice of a real interview mm-hmm. of like a, an extent, like of what she really has done in Vegas. Mm-hmm. And like, not just her nothing to do in Vegas. That's amazing. Right. It's been like, I think eight, seven, eight, eight years it's mm-hmm. been going. And she's young too, so that's yeah. crazy, you know. She's she was a teacher as well, you know, with orchestra. But yeah, I'm just like I need to get that whole story, you know, yeah. and not just you know we love we know we know Coco, we love Coco, but where is she from? Like you yeah. know, like did y'all know she's from the Philippines? You know what I mean? Yeah, like right, right. so it's just stuff like that that's like really important to me, and I want to be able to have like a hundred episodes of like I love that. creatives because I feel like give it. Like 10 years, 20, 30, I don't know. Looking back on those interviews, they're going to be so valuable. I think a lot of people are going to blow up 
whenever we get the right formula, mm -hmm. I want there to be something to look back to of like where they started. And I want people to see like that we're all real people. And yeah. we saw it in real time. LA is like, you know, they got Hollywood, <laughs> New York. When you go to New York, you see all the art. It's so yeah. much history. But Vegas with art, it's not super deep. Right. You know what I mean? But yeah, so definitely, like, that's all I'm trying to do with my interviews. Low docu series. Yeah, no, you know, and I love that you're trying to document it from even the early stages. Yes. Because I'm sure you can relate, but as creatives, we evolve. Yeah. Right? Oh, yes. So we start with one skill set, one talent, and then it moves into a different direction. For organizations like yours, and then for, like, for Artsy, having something where we can celebrate that we're multi-creatives, right? Where we can really tap into the person as a whole, not yes. just, like you said, not just the accomplishments as important as that is, but to really get a feel for what were the beginning, the beginning stages of that. How yeah. did you form into the person that you were and how did you get to where you are today? Yeah. So that is the question. <laughs> yeah. How did you start? Oh my God. Please? How did you start? Wow. I love I love where you've taken it and I just want to know, yeah. Oh my God, I have to shout out everything ever. Love it. You know, I felt like I was always just like a creative kid in terms of like, I used to be dancing all the time. Um, my family's like not. So I was always dancing and just like, I love Michael Jackson. I have Michael Jackson in my head today. I love it. And just so many artists, I love like Chris Brown and Rihanna, like just growing up, you know? And whenever I got to middle school, I was mentioning to you, I went to K.O. Knudsen, and that's an art performing school magnet. And I remember it was different for me, but my mom was like, give it a shot. And we have a major minor. Mm -hmm. And I did TV production and dance. I, wow. Yeah. What a great, uh, yeah, great, great combo. combination. Yeah, yeah, it, was, was like... it taught me so much. TV production. That's where it started for me. That's where I learned editing. I think we sure. did iMovie or something. Well, it's more technical, whereas dance is just, it's free. It's free, freedom, yeah. yeah. Even though dance, like, dance was like, looking back at it, I was like, wow, it was like really hard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's such a hard class. But yeah, I didn't think that TV would be the one that I would pursue. Hmm. But then I went to Gorman, and Gorman had like, the resources that Gorman had sure. were amazing. Like. I have to shout out to Joe Barbara. That was my first teacher in news. And he was like on Jersey Boys at night. Wow. He would teach at Gorman in the morning. He was in Grand Theft Auto 4. I was just like, Ooh. I was such a fan of him. He was just like very Frank Sinatra guy, like just that kind of energy. And he taught me so much about even the way I spoke. Uh -huh. He's like, you need to fix how you speak, slow down, how people really hear you. And I learned directing. I love script writing, anchor. I did every position you could imagine. I used to go out there and I filmed, I don't even know how many things I filmed. Wow. And then until I went to college, I'm, I was thinking that was gonna be my, my career was journalism, but um, like I had told you earlier too, it just, it wasn't giving freedom. Mm -hmm. I'm such a big freedom person. Sure. I wanna just be creative and just, don't tell sure. me how to be creative. And I had a whole like, what, what is it? When you're just like, I don't know what I want to do in life. And eventually video editing came back a few la years later for me. Okay. Trying to get a corporate job. And I got a corporate <laughs> job. I made a video for them. Oh, I love it. Yeah. So now was there an aha moment for you? An aha moment. I think when I made that video, I wanted to just get a job and just like, because college wasn't working out for me. It was something that was... I wasn't interested in soup. I just like, I, the energy I gave it, it was like not there. Right. And I was like, man, I wish I had my, I wish I had this time and energy for something else. Sure. So I was like hustling, getting a job. I always have a job. Like you should ask anyone. Like I always get like weird jobs. I had, wow, this is crazy. You're like opening up different parts of my brain. Cause this is woman I met on LinkedIn. I like to do that. I used to be a big LinkedIn girl. Uh huh. And I met this girl named Chris, Krista and she, connected me she like wanted like to help black women in tech so i was like man thank you she got me a job and i made a video for them oh, I love when that. i made that video i was kind of like hmm, hmm. i kind of still got it yeah. <laughs> you know and i got the job and everything so but when i did the job i thought i was going to do more creative stuff they had a creative and a sales side right so i'm like i'm gonna be in uh, both great yeah. but when I was in the job, it wasn't giving creative. It was just like, you gotta sell a lot more. And I was like, oh no, I don't yeah. like that. And so I actually dropped out of school and quit my job on the same day. 
On the same day. Wow. Same risk day. taker. I said, anyway. Wow, bold. It was very I bold. Love it. And it was a lot because yeah. nine months I was like unemployed. And it was Ooh. one of the hardest times of my life. I had like no money. I was doing freelancing, but wow, like it was so sporadic. But I'm just so grateful that I got my job. It was so random. Mm -hmm. I had like three interviews. I had done, I don't even know how many interviews I've done. I don't know how many applications I've done, yeah. truly. Like I got rejected for nine months of like a million people. But when DraftKings picked me up for video editing, not even wow. videographer, video editing, the thing that I love the most. And since then, like, it's an easy, just chill job. No one asked me so many things. Trust your vision. They trust yes. your talent. Because we're considered creative. So yeah. they're just like, you just do what you got to do. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, my God, thank you. Oh, wow. Yeah, so grateful for that job. Yeah, well, good for changed you. my life. And it's hard being a creative because we do have to balance, right? Paying our bills and being responsible. Yeah. But sometimes even like when I when I formed Artsy, I had to have a hiatus in my business career mm. because it was too hard to do both. Yeah. And I had to get Artsy to a point where it felt like it, I was tapping into my passions and tapping into my why. And then I was able to create what I wanted my vision to be. Yeah. So as a creative, it really is hard to do that. It is so hard. Yeah. Shout out to creatives who do it full time. Yeah, that's that is I, I can I always look at full time creatives and I'm like, wow, like you are rare. <laughs> like I'm even grateful too that I do this full time. Sure. And that feeds me, feeds my sure. my other stuff that I do on the side. Well and part of the, the evolution of creatives also is because we're not stagnant, right? We're always yes. wanting to learn. And because there's so much wonderful talent out there, yeah. it's like we have to be open. And that's hard. It's very vulnerable, right? It puts us in a really vulnerable state. Yeah. But we have to be willing to learn and take pieces of what we're hearing and seeing and experiencing and help, you know, help us to grow in that way as well. 100%. I think the life part, mm -hmm. that part is way more influential yeah. in your art than anything. I want to ask you the question, because you had talked about painting and yes. shared your beautiful design on your jacket. I love that. I love that. So when did that come about? Were you, as a child, were you, were you painting? Nope. Were you an artist? So how did that develop? I'll say this too, actually. I had really artistic friends who painted, and I just, like, painting was something I wanted to do, but, like, it was just such a block for me. Sure. But around the time, life was changing for me a lot. But I was like, I think I turned 20. And that's when I was like, you know what? I'm gonna get over this little block. And I started painting stuff on Pinterest and I started like hanging it up on my walls. And I'm like, this is kind of fun. And I remember my mom, my mom is always like a little bit like uh, friction, you know, when it comes to like art. Mm -hmm. And she's like, I don't know about that. And I'm just <laughs> like, I don't know. I just enjoyed it so much yeah. um, that I just continued to do it. I started putting art on my walls, like just other people's art. I love that. Um, hiatus for a few years and then there was a day that um i was like i want to be for halloween i want to be basquiat and i have wow, to you about basquiat yeah. in the camera will probably see that i have my socks i basquiat. love it i love basquiat i was like i have the locks so i'm just gonna yeah. make them look crazy and i had dyed like tracksuit black and i just painted all of his stuff like i just kind of looked at it and did it wow and i was like this is kind of fun and i started painting on my clothes and it just continued, my painting. I love it. And it wasn't until towards the second half of last year where I was like, you know what? I kind of want to do this. Like, I want to be a painter. It's, I have so much, like, my inner child is, like, so seen oh, there. I yes. That. I love it. I even went to go see Basquiat's gallery in L.A. Wow. And that also changed me. I went to the Art Basel last year. So many things where I was like, you know what? Next year, this, this year, I am going to paint everything that I wear. I'm gonna just paint a lot more. I'm gonna practice with oil pastels. And again, even with painting, I try to do a lot of different stuff. So mm -hmm. painting, oil, I wanna learn, I'm learning how to sketch and stuff. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I just like love painting. I love like, it's not something that you expect maybe from me, mm -hmm. which I kind of like that part. You know what I, I mean? I love that. Yeah. And it's interesting because when we think about the different categories and skills of creatives, it's it just, there's yeah. just so many. So for me, like I'm a musician, vocal coach, music oh God, director, yes. singer, musician, all these things, but I cannot draw. I cannot sketch. I can't draw a 3D box. I mean, 
<laughs> we're going to do and that after paint. and we're going to yeah. find. I painted one thing <laughs> and I needed to be coached through all of it. Yeah. And, and so you'll probably find it funny. So even when I was trying to paint the sky, I was trying to be so meticulous in how I blended the different colors of the sky. I spent way too long. I, I couldn't do it freely. So I actually am so envious of the creatives who can just create freely yeah. without structure and without without like a format or a formula. So how exciting. Can I tell you something? Yeah. That's the only difference is someone who has never painted mm -hmm. overthinks everything. Oh. That's the only difference. For me, how I do it is in my head, the only thing I have is just see it through, just finish it. And you'll find that it'll look kind of like what you're trying to paint. If you just let go of what you think it's supposed to look like, that's the biggest difference. Mm. It's not necessarily your skill set that you can't paint. I'm sure you can paint, but it's just, you need to let go of like it being perfect. And that's yeah. one thing too about being creative. Like I'm so anti-perfectionist. I don't believe in that. I feel like that holds people back. Yeah, I love that. And just being like, oh, it's not perfect. It's, no, there's nothing that's perfect. So right. let go of that and make an abstract sky. Like who cares? Like what the sun yeah. looks like. Like it's not that serious. Sure. And well, actually, you're, you're inspiring <laughs> me now. You Please. actually are. I'm gonna. Yeah. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna make you do a 3D box and see I how easy it is. <laughs> it's like wait, it's crooked. <laughs> no, and it's like who cares? Because again, and I'll tell you this too. And I'll tell you, actually, I'm going to tell you tea, because the Art Basel, you know the Art Basel, right? No. Okay, cool. So it's like one of the biggest art galleries. It's one of the ones that's very highly respected. And wow. So I came, I had overalls I painted, yeah. I was ready to network, but I had gone and I just, the vibe was not what I wanted. Huh. It was like too perfect. It was, everything Ooh. was framed. Don't touch it. Ooh. I'm like, oh, okay, okay. No worries, guys. Ooh, tough crowd yeah. kind of energy. And it wasn't what I wanted. I like to be able to talk to the artist and like, I want to see what you're, there's even enough people who are representing the artist. I feel mm -hmm. like who could care less about the art. So I would ask them like, and they're like, it's like they had a script and they're like, anyway, yeah. go to the Instagram if you want more. Oh, wow. Okay, whatever. Yeah. So I went to the Basquiat uh, gallery and Basquiat died like 30, 40 years ago, yeah. I don't even know. But his family has been keeping up his estate this whole time. And they created that gallery with like stuff from his childhood, stuff that they have stored. Mm -hmm. If you can see Basquiat stuff, he has a lot of stuff that's like not that serious, just a little da 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 da. Wow. And da 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 da. Mm -hmm. That's what it is. It's just, it's not about, he doesn't make like that. portraits that are perfect. Like he just kind of does it however he's feeling. And that's where I was like, who cares if it looks perfect or not? Like just do it. You're gonna have a bunch of stuff you don't like, stuff that you do like. I make stuff and like after I'm like, whatever. And people are like, this is so crazy. And I'm like, eh, it's whatever. You'll always have that energy for your own work. Right. But I'm sure if you, for example, if you did opera, right? And you just, you did something wrong, but maybe I can't even, I can't even tell. I don't do, or I don't do opera. I'm not. Right. I'd be like, that was really impressive anyway. Right. You're already very well versed in music. Well, it's funny that you say that because um, I really am envious of people who can do things freely and yeah. just and just on the fly type of a thing. So as a musician, I started playing piano at, I don't know, three, or I'm sorry, third grade, and then guitar at like fifth grade. So I had music all throughout my life. But to this day, I can only read music. I can't just play by mm. ear. I can't just play freely. And so I'm so envious of musicians who can just sit at a piano, sit at an instrument, and just start playing without knowing chord progressions, without knowing theory, all of these things. Or maybe they know it, but they can still create freely. So there is a gift, but you're right that there is a little bit of a block. But for painting, I definitely believe it's a gift, and I don't have it. <laughs> Wait, can, I, can we talk about music really quick? Yeah. Because music is something that I don't do, and that's what I'm envious about. <laughs> I would love to do music, but I'll say this. I just read a book. It's called The Creative Act uh -huh. by Rick Rubin. And in this book, he basically just says, people are all different. Just because you can't hear it and just do it, right. it, it doesn't, because not every amazing artist that you know is the same. Exactly. Some people can just, but some people, they need structure, yeah. crazy. Like sometimes it's like you need 
the chair to be facing this or I'm not doing it. Right. So just embrace how yeah. you learn and how I you like that. to do things. And that. if you need structure, I don't, I can't do structure. I don't, I don't have a degree in painting. I wasn't going to school for painting. It's just natural So talent. I don't think about rules. Yeah. I just look at it and I'm like, let me just paint that and I love it. whatever happens. So, but yeah, well, it's all right in yeah. its own way. It's never wrong. Well, and I think that's the exciting thing about our industry, right? Yes. Because you have so many creative, talented people that, uh, it could be a natural talent, it could be a learned talent, it could be something they were inspired by somebody else and they didn't know they had the talent, but we're, again, just when I think about our industry, it's that constant evolution, like we're always yes. honing in, maybe not perfecting our skills, but really tapping into our own internal passion yes. and our inspiration and then trying to create something. So I love that. I love that. Of course, of course. So I love you sharing all of that. Thank you, of course. Yeah. Great so questions. Tell, yeah, thank you. So what next? What next, man? What next Come for you? I have a million events going on. So brunches, networking stuff, more short films for me, maybe something coming out next month. Oh, yay. <laughs> <laughs> Another create and relate with crazy artists. Love it. I may have something for painting. <gasps> a little some like a little gallery. I don't know. Maybe something like yeah. that. Maybe something with clothes and models and a little fashion show. Who knows? <laughs> I got a lot of stuff in the works. I want to interview so many more people. I'm here. I'm being more selective sure. this year mm -hmm. with everything, with who I interview, with where I go, who I'm supporting. Mm -hmm. I really want longevity. I love that. I want to be here for a long time. I love that. So I'm not trying to get burnt out. I'm not trying to expand my energy like just everyone who asks for it because I'm learning that mm -hmm. a lot of people were asking for a lot of me and I can't do that. But I want to help as many people as I can. Sure. However that happens, however I can support people, I'm really here for it. I love that. Yeah. And then here in Vegas, because because of how quickly we're growing, it's just an exciting time to be here. It's so, the time to be here. Yeah. And then all the stuff that you're doing for our community. Thank you so much. Of really course. Excited. Can't wait for us to collaborate. Let's collab. Yeah, let's let's do whatever. I'll paint you guys something. Yay. I love it. That would I love be really it. Cool. <laughs> so thank you so much for joining yes, us today, Gaia. Uh, Vegas Creative Network. And please check out the YouTube channel and their upcoming events. Thank you, yes, Gaia. Thank you, guys. Hey guys, I am Gaia Speaks and I am the founder of the Vegas Creative Network. My Instagram, Gaia Speak, or the Vegas Creative Network. I'm an artist, you'll see me do my thing on my personal. The Vegas Creative Network, I try to plug everyone else. So if you're a creative and whatever that means, I am not picky, I'm not strict. Whatever is creative to you, I want to support you. I will repost you. If you have YouTube videos, I will follow, subscribe, whatever. I have my own stuff. If you want to get interviewed, hit us up. Instagram and YouTube, The Vegas Creative Network. Thank you guys, and I love you. Shout out to Vegas.